So you want to be a prepper, but you're not sure where to begin. Well, I hope I can give you some pointers to get you started in the right direction. But first, let me say, welcome aboard. I'm glad to have you. Prepping is one of those things that benefits from the more people who are involved in it. I read a good article today about how preppers help to flatten the curve in the time of, times of crisis. If there's a run on food, well, preppers already have a stockpile of food. If the electrical grid goes down, a lot of preppers already have backup sources of electricity. Preppers help to reduce the demand for essential goods and services during a time of crisis. The more preppers you have in a society, the more benefit they are to one another and to society as a whole. So, I'm very glad that you've decided to take this step because it benefits myself and all of us as well as you. So, let's get down to it. Well, first thing, you're going to need to buy an AR-15, 10,000 rounds of ammo, a year's worth of food, and get yourself an underground bunker to store all this stuff in. Now, of course, I'm joking. All those things would be nice to have, but you don't need them to be a prepper. You can be a prepper if you just have the right mindset and start putting away some goods now for future uncertainties. I think the place I would begin is by identifying the threat. What is it that you're preparing for? Now we need to stick to broad strokes here, don't get bogged down in the details. Really it doesn't matter if the electrical grid fails due to a terrorist attack, a 16 year old Armenian hacker, or just due to aging infrastructure. The end result's the same. So don't get too focused on what will spark whatever the event is that you're preparing for. Instead think of, in broad strokes about what some of the results could be and how you need to insulate yourself from those threats. You need to start with what's most likely to happen and then work out to scenarios that are less likely. For me, I'd start with natural disasters and a short-term electrical grid failure. I'm defining short-term as more than one day and less than two weeks. Of course, natural disasters strike every year all across the country, all across the world, and they often cause short-term electrical fa grid failures. So I see these two as being very tied. Additionally, preparing for a failure of the electrical grid will help you to be prepared for a variety of circumstances that are very likely to happen. As far as natural disasters, focus on what's most likely to occur in your area. For me, here in Northwest Pennsylvania, the most likely natural disaster is a blizzard. My preparations for that are very different than if I lived in California and my most likely natural disaster was wildfires. So focus on the things that are most likely to befall you, and then once you're prepared for those, start adding on events that are still possible but less probable. One thing that, a concept that I like, although this is kind of getting ahead of ourselves here, is preparing for the zombie apocalypse. Now, of course, most of us anyway don't believe that zombies are ever going to rise from the dead. But if you're prepared for a zombie apocalypse, then you're prepared for any of the thousands of scenarios that are much more likely to occur. However, it takes a lot of time and resources to be prepared to that level. So I advocate starting small starting with a focus in mind and then working out from there. After you've identified the most likely threats, next you need to assess your needs. What food, water, medical supplies, anything else that you're going to need to get you through a time of crisis. After you've assessed your needs, then you need to assess your assets. What do you have on hand already that can help you meet those needs? Do you already have a pantry stocked up with two weeks worth of food? Do you have a garden outside where you can produce some of your own food? 
did you get a deal on batteries at Sam's Club and you have more batteries than you're going to need for a decade? Do you have a lake nearby where you can procure water after filtering it? These are all things that you need to take into account and they will influence your future preparations. After you've assessed your needs and your assets, then you need to develop plans, start small, and build out from there. It's very important to develop plans. When a crisis strikes, you want to have an idea of what to do. And it's important to know how to respond to the various crises that could befall you and your family. In starting small, I'd start with a focus on two weeks. Make sure that you can survive disconnected from the grid in a crisis scenario for two weeks. That's a sure enough amount of time that it's obtainable. It's not overwhelming to think about that and start building up two weeks worth of supplies. In fact, it's very easy. Store two weeks worth of non-perishable foods, flashlights, batteries, a first aid kit, water, or water purification mechanisms. Make sure that you have your basic necessities covered for two weeks. Even FEMA recommends that you have a two-week emergency kit on hand. And the way I look at it, FEMA is going to tell you the absolute bare minimum that you should have. Don't stop at two weeks, but make that your first goal. Once you've reached two weeks worth of supplies, then you can gradually start to expand your food and other supplies out from there. If you like, you can set goals of a month of supplies, six months of supplies, a year of supplies. Or you could start focusing on other less likely scenarios, start building your stocks for those sort of events. But make sure that it's gradual and that you set yourself obtainable goals. You don't want to set a goal that's too lofty and then you get discouraged and give up before you've reached it. The final stage is the transition from consumer to producer. You're much more resilient and you'll be much better able to handle a crisis if you're a producer rather than just consuming. That's what I'm doing here, trying to start my garden, produce as much of my produce as I can on this small plot of land. I know that as long as I'm still here, I won't be able to completely transition from consumer to producer, but I'm hoping that I can take great strides in that direction. My goal is to someday have an off-grid homestead where I'm primarily a producer and able to insulate myself to as much a degree as possible from any future crises. Keep in mind that preparedness is a journey. No one is ever fully prepared. It's something that we work at over time. We're always progressing, always learning more. Well, that's where I'm going to focus on is learning more. Because that's another thing. It's not just about stocking up on supplies. A lot of these supplies won't do you any good if you don't know how to use them. And a year's worth of food isn't going to do you a lot of good in a long term grid down scenario if you don't know how to produce some food as well. So constantly learn and build your skills so that way you're better prepared. His knowledge is more important than anything. And with that in mind, don't rely on my channel as your sole source of information. I'm just a novice. I'm documenting my trials and errors, my successes and failures as I go through this journey. But there are many other, much more experienced people on YouTube and across the internet who can help to guide you on this path. I would suggest, if you're early on in this, going to the Bear Independent channel on YouTube and checking out his Prepper Classroom series. It's a very good series that will walk you through in more detail 
a lot of the various preparations that you should make. And don't stop there either. Keep digging, keep learning, keep growing on this journey of preparedness. Thank you. If you liked this video, you thought it was useful, please like, share, comment, subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you around the trailer park homestead.